NDP APC head to court as Fubara swears in local government chairman. Court reduces bail to 5 million naira for end bad governance protesters. And Dangote refinery to get 400,000 barrels of crude daily as naira for crude deal begins. Thank you very much for joining us on News Now. I'm Sinisola Atiku. Following the swearing in of the newly elected council chairman of the 23 local government areas of River State by Governor Simina Laifu Bara, the state chapter of the People's Democratic Party PDP and the All Progressives Congress APC has rejected the conduct and outcome of the exercise, saying that no election was held in the state. The exercise, which was held at the Executive Council Chamber of the Government House in Port Harcourt, the state capital, was reportedly marred by explosions and gunfire. Ex despite the complications due to the ongoing power struggle in the state, the Action People's Party, APP, emerged victorious, winning 22 out of 23 chairmanship positions, while the candidate of the Action Alliance won one seat. The APP also won 314 out of the 319 councillorship seats in the 23 LGAs in the state. However, both the PDP and APC have described the poll as an exercise in futility, vowing to challenge it in court. Well, let's discuss the aftermath of the River State local government elections from a legal uh, standpoint. I'm now joined by legal expert Liberos Oshoma. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing your time. Now, after losing control of the PDP to FCT Minister Yesom Wike, Fubara supporters switched to the APP, securing chairmanship positions in their local government areas, a move the opposition have described as illegal. Can this be challenged in court? Uh, we know how politicians leave one party and move to the next party. I can I can name countless names for you. People who left um, the APC, joined PDP, and won election pre twenty fifteen, and then after twenty fifteen, those people who left APC, left PDP in uh, a week before the uh, primaries, and then collected the ticket of uh, the APC, and then you know when said. Uh, on to win that election. So this is not a novel thing in River State. Uh, people jumping ship where, uh, away from where they do not have favor, where they think they will not meet, you know, they won't get a ticket to areas where they think they can get a ticket. It's not um, a new thing in our uh, the since 1999. So I wonder whether um, those that want to challenge it, are they members of the party? Do they have the locals as members of the party to challenge the outcome of them um, or, or the uh, outcome of any party primary? Um, and also, are they candidates in the election? Even if they are candidates in the election, the time for challenging candidature at past election, what they should be talking about now would be the election of uh, the outcome of the election, not necessarily candidature of a party that they are not members of. Now, despite the loss of the PDP at the polls, does the action of swearing in the LG chairman, who uh, chairman rather, who won on the platform of the APP, confirm Governor Fubara's defection to the party, even though he hasn't um, confirmed it yet? No, uh, Governor Fubara is not in APP. Governor Fubara is in PDP. It is obvious we cannot pretend not to know the politics that is playing out between Governor Fubara. And then, uh, yes, on Wiki. Because the candidate ordinarily couldn't get tickets in a PDP, they all moved to a, a, a PP where they would um, find an easy run. We, we see it happen every day. You know, but the unfortunate part is that River State is just one of the so many states that can conduct an election. And every election conducted by state governor, the party in the state, in this case, we all know the, like you said, the, the supporters of uh, the Governor Fubara had to move to APP. So it was obvious the night before the election, I told some reporters that uh, election had been conducted and that the APP swept the poll. So I don't know what, um, uh, you know, the complaints of the PDP are. But that said, if you remember, in 2015, the same year on Wiki, uh, Justice um, uh, J.T. Agbadu, uh, fashion. Granted, another restraining ways for Wiki as governor from 
come uh, dissolving the, the local government, uh, duly elected local government, but he disobeyed that court order and went ahead to, re to dissolve those local government. As recent as 2024, Justice um, Bayambo also ordered PDP, you know, restrained PDP from holding Congress. Yes, on weekend went ahead to hold their uh, uh, Congress. So, what is basically ha happening, you would say, is that Wiki, you know, is, uh, is uh, suffering from, you know, his own uh, making. Well, that said, I think we should, we should really look at how local government elections are conducted in Nigeria because it is obvious that what we have as local government elections are not elections, but selection. The people who were complaining about the attitude of INEC in a do state selection uh, that I want to bring the uh, uh, roof down on INEC, are the same people rejoicing today the way elections were conducted in River State. So, because it has favored them. So, but we really need to look at how local government elections are conducted. But in as far as Wiki and Fubara is concerned, what I call, uh, what I would call, um, well, the way I describe uh, those elections is, uh, you know, a uh, thief steal from thieves. So they should um, deal with their issues. It has no bearing in the life of the common man. But, for me, I think a true Democrat really need to rescue Nigeria in the way we all come to the here. Mm -hmm. Legal expert, Mr. Lady Shoma, thank you very much for sharing your insights with us. Moving on, still on the River State local government election, a civil society group, the Center for Truth and Justice, has strongly condemned the electoral process, describing it as a travesty of democracy and an assault on the rule of law. The group also slammed Governor Simina Laifu Barra for wasting taxpayers' resources on an exercise which they deemed a blatant disregard for democratic principles and a consolidation of power. In his address, the executive director of the group, Obin Francis said the election was marred by irregularities, including a lack of transparency, accountability, and legitimacy. Governor Fubara's disregard for the, for the law extends to the recent conduct of a sham local government election in River State. The election, which was conducted within the government house, is an embarrassment to the state and the nation as a whole. This process lacked transparency accountability and legitimacy. There were no observers, no genuine electoral oversight, and no opportunity for the people of River State to make their voices heard. You see, uh, if you listen very well uh, from the beginning, um, the security were not provided, and the venue for the election was the government house. So you can put two and two together to arrive at the answers. So if an election was conducted in the government house, I think invariably you definitely know that there will be no security and there was no elections. And because there was no election, that was why securities were not provided. If there were elections all over the state, security must have been provided. And because they have already made their plans not to hold the election as it was supposed to hold, there was no provision for security. And therefore, that was what amounted to this. It was not an election but a selection that was done by Governor Fubara. And this is what the Center for Truth and Justice stands against. People are supposed to express their rights, their civil rights, not being different uh, by the governor. Because people that came out to vote were not given that right to vote. No electoral materials were provided for anybody, and so there was no election. So it was just a selection. Five and bad governance protesters arraigned before the Federal High Court in Abuja will now pay 5 million Naira bail instead of the initial 10 million Naira. This development comes after Justice Emeka Nwite reduced their bail requirement on Monday because they could not meet the original conditions. Counsel for the first, second and fourth defendants, Marshal Abubakar, revealed that some of the protesters have been unable to secure a shorty with landed property in Abuja which is one of the bail requirements. The 10 defendants are accused of attempting to force their way into the seat of power, burning down a police station and inquiring injuring officers. The federal government also claims they incited the public against the government and destroyed public properties, including a police station, a high court complex and national communications commission uh, facilities. However, the 10 defendants have pleaded not guilty to the charges brought against them by the Inspector General of Police, Kaede Egbetoko. 
Meanwhile, the Commissioner of, the, of Police for the Federal Capital Territory, CP Olatunji Disu, has said that his tenure will be defined by a zero-tolerance approach for all forms of crimes and criminality. Disu, who assumed the office of the FCT Police Commissioner on Monday, noted that he is aware of the security challenges facing the FCT and the work done by his predecessors to maintain relative peace. He vowed his leadership will strengthen partnerships with local organizations, community leaders, and other stakeholders. I'm privileged to stand before you today as the new Commissioner of Police for the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the Inspector General of Police for entrusting me with this critical responsibility. As I assume this role, I am acutely aware of the security challenges facing the FCT and the fundamental work laid by my predecessor to maintain relative peace. I am committed to building upon this groundwork and enhancing our effort to significantly improve the security situation in our territory. To those who seek to disrupt the tranquility of the FCT, I send a clear and resolute message. My tenure will be marked by a zero tolerance approach to all forms of crimes and criminality. We will not waver in our commitment to safeguarding our community, ensuring that law enforcement is both effective and respective of the rights of all citizens. I also aim to strengthen our partnership with the local organizations, community leaders, and other stakeholders. Together, we will foster that trust and collaboration on innovative strategies to address the security concerns that affect our residents. Your insight and feedback will be invaluable as we navigate these challenges together and we will actively encourage feedback from members of the public to refine our approach. In addition, we will prioritize the following key areas. Community policing, intelligence gathering. We are going to integrate technology into our policing. In other stories, the staff of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFTAC, have commenced an indefinite nationwide strike action on Monday following the expiration of a 14-day ultimatum issued to the management. The decision to down tools was confirmed after a Congress of NAFTAC staff convened on Friday, October 4, 2024, over unresolved issues, including a review and re-evaluation of the 2024 promotion examination results and settlement of salary arrears for employees hired in 2022, among others. In a statement signed by the Secretary of the Association, Ejo Michael, the union accused NAFTAC management of ignoring their grievances calling the inaction insufferable. The staff have vowed to continue the strike until all demands outlined in their communique are met. We'll take a break, but still to come, Israel marks anniversary of Hamas attacks as Middle East war radius. Stay with us for details. We'll return shortly. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose centre, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? 
Ah. This is the Construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go to app if you want to know how our commonwealth is being expanded by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Welcome back. Here's a recap of our top stories. Following the swearing-in of the newly elected council chairman of the 23 local government areas of River State by Governor Siminala Ifubara, the state chapter of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and the All Progressives Congress, APC, has rejected the conduct and outcome of the exercise, saying that no election was held in the state. Despite the complications due to the ongoing power struggle in the state, the Action People's Party, APP, a man victorious winning 22 out of 23 chairmanship positions while the candidate of the action alliance won one seat the APP also won 314 out of the 319 councillorship seats in the 23 local government areas in the state however both the PDP and APC have described the poll as an exercise in fertility vowing to challenge it in court we also told you that five and bad governors protesters arraigned before the Federal High Court in Abuja will now pay 5 million Naira bail instead of the initial 10 million Naira. This development comes after Justice Emeka Witte reduced their bail requirement on Monday because they could not meet the original conditions. Counsel for the first, second and fourth defendants, Marshal Abubakar, revealed that some of the protesters have been unable to secure a shorty with landed property in Abuja, which is one of the bail requirements. In case you missed any of our news bulletins or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV and AVO TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360Nigeria or download our mobile app on Google Play Store, Huawei App Gallery and Apple Store on Facebook or at TV360 online. It's time for business news. Joy Uchejem is on standby with the latest. Over to you, Joy. Thank you, Simi. Well, the federal government is set to supply up to 400,000 barrels of Nigerian crude oil daily to the Dangote refinery under a Naira for crude agreement. According to reports, this arrangement is expected to roll out over the next two months with approximately 24 million barrels of Nigerian crude being delivered between October and November 2024. This increase in processing capacity at the Dangote refinery is projected to have a significant impact on both the refinery's operations and the local oil industry, potentially reshaping the region's import and export markets. And still on business, the All Progressives Congress Youth Solidarity Network has called for an immediate investigation into the alleged $2 billion spent by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited on the rehabilitation of the Port Harcourt refinery. While condemning the NNPCL over a project that has failed to come alive, the group maintains that the $2 billion investment must be accounted for. President of the group, Olayemi Isaac, who spoke during a press conference in Abuja, urged President Bola Tinubu, the National Assembly, and relevant authorities to take immediate action on Melikiari and those involved in the Port Harcourt Refineries Project Management. The Nigerian oil sector is in urgent need of reform. The NNPCL, in its current form, has failed 
to meet the needs of the Nigerian people. It has become a breeding ground for corruption, inefficiency, and the exploitation of our natural resources for the benefit of a few. This must stop, and it must stop now. First, we demand the immediate restructuring of the NNPCL to make it more transparent and accountable to the Nigerian people. The management of our oil resources cannot be left in the hands of those who have shown themselves to be more interested in personal gain than in national development. We need competent, patriotic individuals at the helm of our oil sector who will ensure that the wealth of the nation is used for the benefit of all Nigerians. Secondly, we urge the government to take decisive action against all those involved in the mismanagement of the Port Harcourt refineries. There must be consequences for corruption and inefficiency. Those who have stolen from the Nigerian must be brought to justice and the funds recovered must be used to complete the rehabilitation of the refineries. Thirdly, we call for the immediate end to fuel subsidies and the importation of blended fuel into the country. Nigeria has the capacity to refine its own oil. If we own the crude, then we can actually refine the oil and make it a domesticated oil. We'll take a pause here and return with more updates from the stock markets. Welcome back. It's the first weekday of trading and Nigeria's equities market ended in the bullish territory, maintaining the win from Friday and making it the second positive close in the month of October. Now the market increased by 0.19% with the market cap at 56.15 trillion Naira. And on the gainers chart, the banking sector grabbed the gold with shares of Fidelity Bank increasing by 10% to 14 Naira 30 Kobo, followed by livestock, which ended the day's trade at 3 Naira 6. Now, at the close of the first trading day on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, a remarkable 308 million shares exchanged hands across 10,420 deals, and this bustling activity brought the market to a total value of 5.5 billion naira, highlighting the vibrant commercial activity on today's trade. Now, in the world of global stocks, it's once again a tale of two markets for our select global equities, and this is as Japan's Nikkei and UK's FTSE finish firmly in the green sector as you can see from the charts. Meanwhile, the U.S. stock indexes took a dive on Monday, weighed down by climbing treasury yields and escalating conflicts in the Middle East, which kept the traders cautious, leaving the market in a state of unease. Now, in the foreign exchange market, the Naira dipped further against the U.S. dollar on the black market at 1,675 Naira, but remained the same against the British pound at 2,270 Naira, while the euro stands at 1,870 Naira on the black market. That is both business and stock market updates. Back to you, Simi, for the rest of the news. Thank you very much, Joy. And on the foreign scene, a Russian court has sentenced the 72-year-old American Stephen Hubbard in a close trial to nearly seven years in prison for allegedly fighting as a mercenary in Ukraine. According to prosecutors, Stephen Hubbard signed a contract with the Ukrainian military after Russia sent troops into Ukraine in February 2022 and he fought alongside them until being captured two months later. He was sentenced to six years and ten months in a general security prison after prosecutors had called for a sentence of seven years in a maximum security prison. Hubbard from the state of Michigan is the first American known to have been convicted on charges of fighting as a mercenary in the Ukrainian conflict. 
Meanwhile, a somber day of uh, commemoration has been observed in Israel to mark the first anniversary of the October 7 Hamas attack as hundreds of people gathered at the site of the Nova Festival to honor those who lost their lives. Israel's ensuing war in Gaza has killed more than 41,000 people and triggered a humanitarian crisis, catalyzing a widening regional conflict. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said his country faced faces war on seven fronts, naming Iran and its proxies, including Hezbollah and Hamas. Well, up next is Entertainment Report on News Now. Kelly Ray of the former Double K duo in the Big Brother Ninja No Lose Guard season has emerged winner of the show. Kelly Ray edged Wani who came in second and Oyeka third to emerge winner of the night. It was announced the winner by the host of the show Ebuka Obi Wuchendo during the grand finale of the show on Sunday night in Lagos. As the winner, Kelly Ray goes home with a cash prize of 60 million naira and a brand new car worth 40 million naira, bringing the total prize worth to 100 million naira. The 33 year old singer who entered the show as a pair with his wife Kasia is a graduate of Delta State University. The reality television show began on July 28 with 28 housemates. The show witnessed lots of twists, drama, controversies, thieves and romance as the housemates came in pairs of 14. That's it on Entertainment Report on News Now, Victoria Akonde, TV360 Lagos. Finally on sport, the Confederation of African Football, CAF, has named Malawian Philip Nkakananga as the center referee for the Super Eagles 2025 Africa Cup of Nations qualifying March Day 3 encounter against Libya. Nkakananga's compatriots Clemens Kanduku and Joseph Nyoti will serve as assistant referees 1 and 2 respectively, while Botswana and Kebetswe Dintwa will serve as the fourth official. The Super Eagles will host the Mediterranean night at the Godzilla Pavio International Stadium, Uyo on Friday. Still on sport, the Premier League has released a statement following the publication of an arbitration panel's decision which arose from a legal challenge by Manchester City against the league's associated party transaction APT rules. The tribunal's decision offers a detailed assessment of the APT framework addressing both the strengths and shortcomings of the system. In its response, the Premier League, in a statement on Monday via its website, emphasized that the tribunal's findings largely supported its approach adding that the decision endorsed the overall objectives, framework and decision-making of the APT system. The league underscored that the tribunal recognized the necessity of the APT rules in maintaining financial stability, integrity and competitive balance within the league. Well, that's it on News Now. Many thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.